Hello, good evening. It's exactly 11 p.m. in Abuja in Lagos in Nigeria. In Johannesburg, South Africa, it's midnight. And here in Accra, Ghana, it's 10 p.m. Welcome to News at 10. I'm Stephen NT. And you can hear us live on your radio at 3 of 92.7. And we're live from the News Hub at Addis Kanda. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll be bringing you the very, the very latest local news and international news. Uh, but first, let's start with the major news highlights of the day. President Kufuado has said in his State of the Nation address that his government will invest heavily in the Eastern Corridor Road project to ensure its completion as soon as possible. The project, which was started by the previous government seven years ago, remains uncompleted. And the One Village, One Dam policy will start this year. Half a million farmers across the country will be enrolled onto the Planting for Food and Job program to increase food production. These were the highlights of the state of agriculture as de delivered by the President in his State of the Nation address. And the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union has cautioned government to brace up for more demonstrations and strikes in the next few weeks uh, to address their concerns. If government fails to address their concerns, General Secretary of the Union, Solomon Kote, was reacting to the President's State of the Nation address, which he said government had maintained minimized unrest. An Accra High Court has quashed a decision by the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, John Pitame, to revoke the mining licenses of Exxon Cubic. The court, presided over by Justice Kweku Akabuafo, maintained the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources exceeded his powers by assuming the powers of an adjudicator. Those are our major news highlights. Remember, you can hear us on your radio at 3 of 92.7 and you can follow our live stream on Facebook and on 3news.com. To our very first story now, President Okufuado has said in his State of the Nation address that his government will invest heavily in the Eastern Corridor Road project to ensure its completion as soon as possible. The project, which was started by the previous government seven years ago, remains uncompleted. Evelyn Tingma reports. The president touched on several sectors of the economy, including security, employment, education, health and agriculture. The president assured the people of Ghana of completion of the Eastern Corridor Road project. This network of roads has suffered from deliberate, unproductive propaganda. It is hard to believe that at the time when cocoa prices were going down, Contracts were awarded for three sections of the road to be funded by Cocoa Board. It comes as no surprise. It comes as no surprise that Cocoa Board has issued directives to suspend work on all three sections, which come up to almost 100 kilometers. Mr. Speaker, we are determined to find the needed resources to complete the Eastern Corridor Roads. But Minority Leader Haruna Idrisu blamed the President's administration for the delays in the Eastern Corridor Road project. Eastern Corridor, the Eastern Corridor Roads. <laughs> and the Borga, and the Borga Tango Boku Road. If contractors are paid and not given razor cards or renegotiations, they will be completed on time. The president also indicated that efforts are being made by ECOWAS to find a lasting solution to the problem with nomadic headsmen which go beyond the country's borders. He has meanwhile said government was working at rehabilitating abandoned ranching projects. On health, the president said arrears of the national health insurance have been paid. Unemployment, which has been a major concern to many, the president said he is determined to guarantee young people in particular their future by creating jobs for them. 
he reiterated government's resolve to ensure the environment as well as water bodies and forests are protected. We cannot look on as our very existence as a country is put in jeopardy and our water bodies, forests and landmass are destroyed. Even with the ban, it has been a never-ending battle with the Galamseas. And I'm sure the House will want to join with me in praying, paying tribute to the members of our forces in the Operation Vanguard that are protecting our environment. They are Ghanaian patriots of the first order. We have started various schemes to find sustainable alternative sources of income for the Ghanaian sales. The speaker, nothing will ever equate the attraction of the search for gold or diamond, and maybe the drama of actually finding some. But this generation of Ghanaians dares not preside over the destruction of our lands. The president ended his one hour message to parliament with the assurance that he will build Ghana beyond aid. And the chief executive officer of the African Energy Consortium and member of the Energy Unit of the Association of Ghana Industries, Kwame Janto, has expressed disappointment in the president for not announcing when the emergency power barges will be dispensed. He indicates that the country uh, needs to implement the National Development Planning Commission's report on the energy sector. Reacting to the stability in power supply, CEO of African Energy Consortium and member of the Energy Unit of the Association of Ghana Industries, Kwame Jantua indicated it is needed for the survival of industry, but there is the need to work on bringing tariffs down. Energy is key. Power is key in everything we do today. And it's not only in Ghana, it's around the world. And so it is something we should really make sure that we have got it down to a T, whereby we eliminate any outages where power is concerned. He wondered why government is still keeping the emergency power badges. When the MPP were in a position that these were expensive units that we were using to help solve Dumso. They are still in operation. They are still providing power. What is the long-term plan in terms of how we generate our electricity? We have presented the NDPC, National Development Planning Commission, has presented a long-term national development plan. In that development plan, there is a comprehensive section on energy. I didn't hear the president say anything about the long-term national development plan that has been given. Former Petroleum Minister Emmanuel Amakofibua, reacting to the State of the Nation address, said President Ekufado did not have a plan to sustain power supply. I, I wanted to hear one initiative that will give us assurance that all the hard work that has gone into us having stability in power supply, all the hard work that has gone into making sure that now we can have gas flowing. All the hard work that has gone into us coming up with a financial solution to create the indebtedness, that this government has some new things to it. None. I can state that since November, there's been no report of premixed diversion. He indicated the president was misinformed to say there has not been any diversion of premixed fuel since November last year. The major scandal on premise happened in December. So, you see, people are misinforming the president, and in turn, the president is giving out wrong information. The president just repeated the erroneous numbers that was thrown out by his own Minister of Agriculture. I think that the ministers must brief the president well. Meanwhile, the president has praised the outstanding performance of the stock market, calling it one of his economic achievements. President Akufuado said the encouraging performance of the Ghana Stock Exchange is the result of solid macroeconomic fundamentals his government has laid. Stock Exchange closed the year 2017 impressively at 52.73% returns. This follows two consecutive years of posting losses. The exchange had started the year 2018 on a positive note. 
already in just about five weeks into the new year, figures from the market have started showing signs of promising returns for investors. The president acknowledged this in his 2018 State of the Nation address. Bloomberg described Ghana's stock exchange as the best performing stock exchange in the world for January 2018. The report illustrated how the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index has gained 19% since the start of the year in dollar terms, ahead of the Nigerian, Chinese and Brazilian stock markets. The President acknowledged this in his 2018 State of the Nation address. President Ekufuadu had praise for the Minister of Finance. Can Oforiata, the Finance Minister, can Oforiata, the order, finance minister order. is proving to be a national asset. Uh, the Ghana Police Service will soon undergo significant transformation to enhance the capacity and efficiency to fight crime. The service will be uh, resourced with 800 million cities to procure, supply and train police personnel to use modern equipment, gadgets and security vehicles including aircraft to enforce law and order. These were contained in the President's State of the Nation address delivered in Parliament today. Then Ekufuado in his State of the Nation address catalogued issues of national security, acknowledged the lack of key resources in the sector. We will give the police the resources they need to do their job. An initial amount of 800 million CDs is being made available to procure and supply within the next six months critical modern policing equipment and gadgets to enhance the capacity of the police to enforce law and order, including 1,000 vehicles, motor bicycles, motorbikes and ammunition. President Ikufad also revealed crime laboratories will be modernized and properly equipped to provide the necessary support. We'll purchase drones and helicopters to assist the police combat violent crime and environmental crime. The crime laboratories will be modernized and properly equipped to provide the necessary support. The police intelligence unit will also be strengthened. The perennial problems associated with police accommodation will be tackled and a compensation package introduced to cover officers in their line of duty. He also pledged his commitment to protect the citizenry from criminals. The safety and security of our people are at the heart of all that we do. Ghanaian citizens have a right to expect to go about their daily lives in an atmosphere of peace. A Ghanaian has a right to expect that those who break the law must be subject to the sanctions laid down under the law. The police the prosecution services and the judiciary owe it to all of us to make us feel and be safe. These, the president said, will improve the responsiveness of the police and ensure a safe environment for Ghanaians to live in peace. And all attention was on Parliament Thursday as the president delivered his second State of the Nation address. Or uh, living former presidents and members of the diplomatic corps also grace the occasion. By 8 a.m., ambassadors, top hierarchy of the various security agencies, started arriving at the Parliament House. Next were the former presidents. First to arrive was former President Jerry John Rawlings. President Mahama was next, accompanied by the former Chief of Staff Julius Deborah. Next was a Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia and his wife Samira. After, the military then formed the guard in honor of the President. By 10 a.m., the President arrived. He then inspected the guard. He was ushered into the chamber by the Speaker, Minority and Majority Leaders. The minority was in mourning clothes. Many thought they would remain silent following their silence in the chamber Wednesday. But that was not so.
The usual heckling was not absent. After the president's speech, the majority leader moved for the House to be adjourned. The minority side, who refused to second adjournment the previous day, had its leader on his feet. I was touched by the president's humor of ever of Novebula. And I, 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 I hope generously the Honorable Averge will translate it for the record of the answer of that important message, Mr. President, you wanted to convey. Mr. President, we have heard you on your state of promises. <laughs> and Mr. President, we have heard you that at least soul sourcing is still lawful in that. <laughs> the speaker, of course, not to be missed. Not to be missed today is the inundation of the chamber by morning clocks. And of course, the accompanying dirges. Mr. Speaker, the people of Ghana remember that it's only a year ago that my colleagues went into mourning. Mr. Speaker, I will play that having listened to the President, we adjourn in order to recompose ourselves, but will not miss the occasion to join our colleagues in the morning. It's only one year ago. And there were mixed reactions from MPs after the President's State of the Nation address. While the minority maintains there was nothing new in the President's message to give hope to the people, the majority MPs have contrary views. Sourcing. It was quite strange to hear His Excellency the President talk about cost savings or savings. Uh, I guess that the President was not well briefed with regards to that. The interpretation of the numbers could be completely different. For instance, if you put up as many as 394 applications for sole sourcing and only 223 uh, approved, it could, also means that, it could also mean that the applications were grossly incompetent. I think that it is completely misleading to talk about cost savings and uh, putting a figure of 900 million on it, which means that someone must be prosecuted for it. From what he was telling us, if you look at the history, a summary of it, we took a country from a, a point of crisis, we stabilized it in the first year. In the second year, he is going to continue to implement his major policies. And he gave update of all the things that he has done and his budget plans. I tell you, this is good news. The update we are getting is, is giving us another hope in Ghana. For me, I was uh, disappointed in the sense that you cannot talk about the state of the nation without talking about the state of the health of the people of this country. Whatever um, the economic indicators that we want for this country, you can't achieve them without a healthy population. And I'm sure listening to him, he didn't tell us how healthy Ghanaians are. He went straight to payment of debts. And it's addressing the sick. The sick need to be treated. But you tell us how healthy about the, 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 the country in terms of life expectancy, in terms of, you know, healthy populations and things like that. From 73% to 71%, that is the growth of the debt. Nana said that uh, uh, he's paid arrears, NHIS arrears, he's paid contractors, and uh, that Ghana is going to experience a, a, a revamp of the economy. Uh, these are the sort of things that Ghanaians expect. His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana came to Parliament today just to rehash the campaign promises of the MPP. Uh, in 2017, in, in, in their budgetary allocation and their address to us, these were the same things that the president told us. He has come to repeat the same thing. We really don't know where we are as a, as a, as a, as, as a country. And you can call it the last supper or lunch with his MPs. Former President John Dramani Mahama was hosted to lunch by the minority MPs right after the President's message to Parliament. Yeah, the man of the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Parliament's cafeteria was the venue, and the food, rice and stew. A number of minority MPs gathered round a table, and in their midst was former President Mahama. It was lunchtime, and this was right after the President's message to Parliament. The lunch lasted for about 15 minutes, and the MPs said it was unity and the beauty of democracy. The former president said it was good having lunch with the MPs. <laughs> this is still News at 10. We're live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda. You can hear us also on 3FM 92.7. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, an Accra High Court has quashed a decision by the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, John Peter Mewu, to revoke the mining leases of Extant Cubic Mining Company. The court presided over by Justice Kweku Akabuafo maintained the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources exceeded his powers by assuming the powers of an adjudicator. The court was of the view it is only a competent court of jurisdiction that can pass judgment on whether to revoke the licenses or otherwise. The court further said the minister breached the Audi Partum rule of natural justice by not giving Aston Cubic a fair hearing, adding that once it signed a license, it had acquired it. Aston Cubic is also seeking other reliefs, including an order of injunction preventing the ministry from granting the right acquired by Aston Cubic Group to any other person. But this was dismissed as the court insisted it will not make consequential orders. Counsel for Estin Cubic, lawyer Godwin Eduji Tamaklu, welcomed the decision by the court not to make any consequential orders. And we are pleased that today the application, and that has always been our position, right from the word go, that the self-serving you know, decision of the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources today has been rightly quashed by the court of this country. And the court took the view that in its mind, it will exercise its discretion not to injunct the minister and that it will remit the decision back. We are fine with that. Estin Cubic Limited last year went to court challenging the revocation of its mining lease by the Minister of Land and Natural Resources. The minister, John Peter Mewu, in September 2017, revoked the company's licenses to prospect in the Nyinehin bauxite concession of the Tunnel of Finn Forest Reserve, describing the company's operations there as illegal because of invalid mining leases. Lawyers for the company told the court that the minister acted unreasonably by revoking the license without allowing the company opportunity to meet all requirement. They pray the court to order restoration of the license. And that's it for News at 10. Thank you very much uh, for staying. We have the crew. Good night. There is more news at 3news.com.